you want to share. So, I'd like to uh, call the meeting of the Niles Main District Library to order. Here. Here. Linda. Here. Tim. Here. Okay. And we're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Much. Um, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the tentative budget and appropriations public hearing that was held on June 20th of 2018? Motion. 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 Okay. And there's a second. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, corrections be made to the July 20th? Budget and appropriations public hearing meeting minutes. Right, hearing none, I'll have a roll call. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. Linda. Yes. Yes. All right, we're hearing a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of June 20th, 2018. <coughs> Second. Second by Dan. And are there any uh, corrections or changes that anyone would like to point out to the regular board meeting? You know, I wanted to ask if I could add two comments. It's under the public comment where you explained um, your um, the letter that you brought us to the meeting. And um, I recall that I asked you a question and that Dennis Martin also asked you a question and I thought the questions were relevant to your decision. So I would like to add that I, um, Trustee Derblick asked, um, and I had it here verbatim somewhere, um, well since you don't care about verbatim, what I said was, Trustee Derblick asked, are you saying when we leave our seats, and give public comments as residents were in violation. And your response was that this was a new finding and that was it. So it didn't really answer my question. And I think it's important to realize I'm not a trustee when I leave my seat and give public comments as residents of Niles. And then also towards the end, um, Dennis asked if you could um, show him where it actually says this. And, and then we ended. So um, I think those two questions are key because we're trying to figure out based on this letter where in fact it stated that. So that was why our, we brought up our questions. And I think that would make this conversation complete. Um, I do remember you asking a question, and I also remember referring you to the ruling of the Attorney General's office. And Not to my question, because on the uh, tape, yes, I have exactly Excuse what you me, Karen, said. but I do, I do think that was how I responded. No, it's wrong. You can listen to the tape. I copied it from the tape. I think I referred you to the ruling of the Attorney General's office. No, you said exactly. And you know what? If you want to give me a few seconds, I'll pull out my exact wording from the um, minutes on the video and then there won't be any discrepancy i could probably even tell you where in the video you can go if i made a note to uh, listen to yourself um well, here I, I don't, I don't so my you. question was specifically are you saying the board should not make comments as residents you responded well this is a new ruling finding and that was it Probably because I was cut off by another question. No, because I um, um, then. All right, all right, Carolyn. Okay, fine. You 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 wanted to change the video. Please listen to the video, and then. Maybe okay, the see. video is what the video is, and, and and that's fine. But as we've said before, the minutes are sort of a summary of it, and you know when you come in and ask to have the minutes repeat every single word that was said during a meeting, it's exactly as you put it on the tape. What that is is sort of defeating the purpose of having the minutes 
be a summary. I disagree with so, your explanation of why I want a statement, which is totally different from your statement added to the minutes to show a difference in this situation. I am okay. talking as a trustee who leaves her seat to give public comments and is considered a resident. That is not stated in anything you're saying. Right, what we're looking at right now is whether the minutes are a rather accurate summary of what was said at the meeting. Not verbatim. They are not accurate. Because my point is not your point. Um, but this is not going to whether or not the AG opinion says one thing or another. It has to do with whether or not this is a summary of what happened. So we have a movement and we have a second on the floor. So you're denying me my statement? The movement or the second uh, want to accept any changes to the motions that they made? I don't have a problem. Diane, do you want to make any changes or do you want to sustain um, or to keep your motion as I is? don't think we need any changes. All right, so what we're going to do is vote on the motion. And if the motion fails, then someone else can make a motion. But what motion are we voting we're going on? To move on? What motion are we voting on? The, vote, the motion just to approve the minutes as is. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, okay. The motion on the floor is to approve the minutes of June 20th, 2018, the regular meeting. Would you call? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't think you were correct, but don't we normally go around and ask if we want to approve the addition first before we approve the minutes? Or where, where, but you said you did not want to approve the addition. I asked no, I said I didn't have a problem with it. You didn't have a problem with what? The with the motion, the motion to add the addition. But I misunderstood you. I misunderstood you. Yes. All right, I'm not, okay, all right, well then. I don't know what the rule, I don't know what the procedure is. All right, and, <laughs> well, well, then we don't have a motion on the floor at all. Then we don't, because if you have said you want to change it, but you do not, I don't think we have a fully made and seconded motion. Okay. So there's no motion on the floor. Okay. Uh, no fully made motion on the floor to change the minutes. So, I'm going to ask if anyone else makes, wants to make a motion to approve the minutes as is or to approve them in a specific way. You know, excuse me, Cousin Diamond, could you try to at least repeat what I am requesting be no. added? Because every time I make a statement, you go on and on about something I'm not even talking about, which makes my statement actually lost in the shuffle and your idea of what I said irrelevant. And you do it constantly. I'm afraid I'm not really sure what you're talking about. What we are doing right now is just trying to approve the minutes. And the minutes are, again, supposed to be a summary of what happened at that meeting. So, I'm asking now if anyone wants to make a motion to approve them as written or make a motion to approve them in some other specific way. I would like to make a motion to add two sentences. All right. What are your sentences? The first one is that and Trustee Derblick. And where would that be? Yeah. Right after her. It's, on, it's under the um, public comment after Trustee Diamond's paragraph. There were just two questions. Trustee Derblick asks, are you saying the board should not make comments as residents? Trustee Diamond responded, well, this is a new ruling finding, and that was it. But I think that should be added because I made a point of identifying myself as a resident when I leave this chair. And that's it? That's what you're adding? And then my second sentence was, I wanted to add Trustee Martin's question. He asked you to show him where it states that. Well, she did. And it was right there. And I don't know how you would find Okay, but that's important. Just say, she repeated, I don't know, I eat anything. But the fact that he asked that, and that, that is the sentence that you referred to as answering his question. 
I don't think it's that complicated. So you're saying that goes in the middle of this paragraph someplace? So no. When you were finished speaking, I asked the question, and then Dennis asked the question. Well, how do you want this change? I want at the end, I just said at the when end of public comments, inserted. which is her paragraph after it, I asked a question. I just want you to add a line after that. You want to skip the space, stick it in the middle, you know, right after public comment. That's fine. Trustee Derblick asked, Are you saying the board should not make comments as residents? Trustee Diamond responded, Well, this is a new ruling finding. I just want it added at the bottom of her paragraph because my sentence, my question, is completely different than what she's discussing. I just want the point made. Does anyone want to second that? No. Oh. Okay, we have a second. Okay, so Carolyn made the motion. Right. And then the second. I'm just going to say no because I don't recall it that way and I think it's adequate as it is. And I resent that you don't recall and you refuse to listen to the video. Why do we have a video? Obviously, the Why memories on this board are not have a video? It's so that we don't have to have verbatim statements okay. in the Okay, once again, you know, you know what, President right, Diamond, right. please right, do not middle? minimize my intelligence I'm by not. trying to blame this right. on verbatim just when I'm trying to point out right, that my point call is call completely start. different. Uh, Carolyn? On what? And the motion that we made. Yes. Dennis? Yeah. Diane? No. Patty? No. Linda? Patty has the question now, so. I'm going to just say no and then ask the question. Uh, Tim? Yes. Okay. Um, so it does not pass as of now. Um, does someone else want to make another motion? Uh, motion to accept the minutes as they were originally were, uh, written. Okay. Um, is there a second to that? Second. Does anyone have any questions or comments or changes they want to make to that? I think you do. I have one question. Um, so for the for the answer to the question that I believe Carolyn is stating, um, the question is what is specific why the trustee shouldn't go up. Is that the state of Illinois that the intent of open meeting is to ensure that is that written right here with the section 2.06? So that's the answer, actually, to the question that she wants to pose within the paragraph? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Is that, have to is that the I answer? Mean, she's a quote from. Okay. The, I, that, that's the, the document that you're referring to that we all had a copy of mm -hmm. was a response to an issue at a different township. That does not indicate the AG's decision on this matter. The AG sent this to me on it the is matter not. that I raised. My question was, does a member of a public body have the right to address the public body during public comments? And the, their answer was, no. The intention of the Open Meetings Act is that residents be allowed to address you know? Who told you no? the deputy attorney general. And the deputy attorney general is, is the, the one person who gave, wrote the letter or yes, gave it to you? Both. Both? She's both? Because I spoke to her. It's a man. No, it's a woman. No, it's the a woman. woman who wrote the letter that we were given is a woman. Okay, so. Okay, so I, who did you speak to that told you that? Because I'd like to let this woman know who sent us this letter, know that someone's given out incorrect information. Because I've already had a conversation with her. So who did you speak to? Deputy who? I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, you don't? But he, no, Carolyn. I don't. You should, because this is important. So you talk to somebody. We're just trying to approve yeah. the minutes right now. That's all we're trying to do. This is not. Well, then what's her comment to do with, with one thing or another? 
what the Attorney General may or may not have said exactly. to Susan. The debate and is not, over what not was the said at the meeting. But Ms. Diamond, uh, yes, the yes. problem is, is that we're trying to get down to the, the base of what's actually uh, true. Right. And and I, well, we're, right now we're trying to get down to what was said. Um, yeah. and, and she said that she took down verbatim mm -hmm. what was on the video. And so rather than just, you know, saying, okay, I, I believe you, Carolyn, I, I believe that you watched the video and wrote it down, you're just saying, well, I'm not going to bother with that because I don't know why. Well, what I'm saying is that the minutes are supposed to be a summary. But if they're, what if, if they're but, but see, an right, summary. Right, let, let, me, let me finish, though, because if, if one trustee wants the exact words in one paragraph, then why should we have the exact words of the I understand entire what you're I understand what you're meeting saying. in yeah. a minute? Yeah. So that it you know it's supposed to be a summary. And summary is an anchor of summary. It is, but it's not. Thank you, Dennis. But it you know it, it, again it's supposed to be a summary. So we're not. I, I agree. The summary. I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. It should be a summary. Well, then I mean, the accuracy. I agree that the summary has to be accurate. Okay. okay. Not that she has to write specific her words. Usually, that's not customary to put somebody's and so, so specific would, words in a summary. So would you be okay changing it, summarizing it, and making it more accurate then? Well, then I'd have to give a summary. Uh, oh, Dennis, <laughs> that question where she got the response was because of the question I did the meeting yeah, no, before, I, I which was not all e in those minutes either. Yeah. So should we go back two meetings and say, put that? No. That it's, was your it's ridiculous. That was your option. It's ridiculous to nitpick about every single thing. That has nothing to do, my statement is not nitpicking, and I resent it that you, none of you understand. You just refuse to work as a board. That's just the problem here. Why you can't add my one sentence, Letter which paper. totally is different. Let's get this over with. Whatever it takes. Let her add her sentence, get this over with. I don't want to get until 10 o'clock because we're debating over one silly thing. It's not silly, that's what's upsetting. Okay, so as of right now, there is, is there a motion? There's a motion yeah. to accept the minutes. Yes. Yes. Okay, there is, as, 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 okay, that's what's on the table now. So, um, do we need to vote? Uh, yeah, I guess that's, yes, that's what we need to do. Karen? Um, yes. Carolyn? Are we accepting the minutes as is? Or that's the change? motion that's on the table now. Okay, no. Dennis? No. Um, Diane? Yes. 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 Okay. Has anyone registered for public comment? Yes. It appears not. All right. Treasurer's report. Okay. So uh, we are in the twelfth month of the fiscal year, which is the end of our fiscal year, so we complete the budget. And we're starting on page 11. Uh, revenues are at exactly 100% of what we had budgeted, so it's really quite remarkable. Uh, salaries, uh, we uh, completed under budget by 90,000. If you remember last uh, month, we discussed the reasons for um, uh, being under budget on that. That section. And again, everybody's welcome to, to question anything you wish. Page 12, library materials, uh, categories uh, exactly on budget. Um, the library operating expenditures, uh, the whole thing is under budget by 48000 uh, some dollars. A couple of uh, interesting items the internet charges. Uh, actually, we have a credit of $1,000, so that's, that's, that's nice. Um, that's due to the E-rate reimbursement that we received in November of 15429 So uh, we actually made sense. Uh, uh, we didn't make money, but it, uh, as, as far as the budget's concerned, we were you know, so far under budget, we were you know, in a negative. Uh, software licenses, 
uh, underspent by nearly 31,000. And I don't know, probably nobody remembers, but way back in fiscal year 1516, uh, we made a payment, an earlier payment of 12,500 in that area. And then we delayed our electronic scheduling uh, for a, a, an amount of $8,000. And we also had better pricing on products throughout the year. So good job. Uh, the grant uh, item on that is uh, over budget, but you know, if we all remember, uh, grants have to be spent exactly as the amount that comes in. So we got a higher grant than we had thought in that category. So you know, we had to spend it. Uh, it's it's actually a balanced amount. So we could, you know, we could talk about it, but the you know, budget really doesn't matter. Uh, page thirteen. Overall categories under budget by forty-two thousand dollars. You know, clearly there's uh, variance in various line items, but um, uh, again, we can talk about it. But the overall categories we leave over. I would mention what we're mostly concerned with. And uh, page fourteen, various items. Uh, again, we have talked about this throughout the year. Um, uh, they're completed near budget. Uh, capital expenditures. Uh, capital expenditures is one thing we probably should uh, note that's significantly under budget due to a delayed start of uh, a number of projects, including the chiller replacement, which we talked about, the exterior caulking and the exterior painting. So those are going to be in our next fiscal year. Uh, page 15, Social Security unemployment. Uh, it's completed. Uh, workers camp slightly under budget. Uh, building and maintenance was 13% under budget. And our total expenditures uh, completed at 10% under budget. Uh, however, we do have to note that, that almost $500,000 of that was due to the capital expenditures money item, as previously discussed. That is the sum total of my report. So good job, uh, staff, in keeping everything within budget uh, that we had uh, indicated at the uh, last year's budget. Thumbs up. Uh, that Within a half a dollars. That's pretty good. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go very close. Are there any questions about the financial report? All right. Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, I'm now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills. So I'm operating expenses of 27000 $186,000.30. And payroll expenses of $283,853.46 for a total monthly expense of $554,039.86. Is there motion? I make the motion. Second. Okay. Right, are there any questions or comments about the bills? Very none. No. Dennis? I'm sorry. Yeah. Diane? Yes. Daddy? Yes. I'm Doc? Yes. Yes. Okay, then we move on to the next agenda, agenda which is the director's report. Susan, can you tell us about this and in particular about the AA? It was a wonderful conference. It was extremely meaty and um, all kinds of interesting oh, information. Ahead. But yeah, uh, well, I wanted to. Um, you had asked a question regarding the destruction of uh, recordings, and so I turned that to Cindy because she is in charge of our local records act management, and she has found. The information on that, and basically that particular question was to do with destroying executive session recordings and minutes. If it, we were, it was the question of you know could you just keep holding them forever and not release them? And so um, basically the answer is it's not governed by local records act. It's governed by the Open Meetings Act, and basically so stick around forever. But just for your um, information, with all of our recordings. Uh, since we have created these records for an audio recording, we would have to retain for 60 days after the adoption of minutes that dispose of it. 
So we could destroy the recording of the meeting last month to it's 60 days after tonight since you adopted those minutes. Video is 30 days after the date of the last airing that dispose of since ours are on the, the internet. I don't know how that would affect that, but anyway, that's the answer. It's, uh, so what are we going to be doing? You already did any action that you were going to do. It was really just a theoretical question. Oh no, you my are. question was specifically, when will we destroy the recordings of the minutes that are not executive? So you just, I oh, think okay. you just said that you can dispose of them after 60 days. Right. Yeah, but since they're on the um, website, that may be a problem? The video recordings are on the website. The audio recordings are not, and those could be destroyed 60 days after. So the audio can be destroyed, but the video won't. And there's no reason that we would. I mean, we it's part of our record, but we could. If it stopped being on the website, then it could be destroyed after 30 days. I don't okay, know why so we could do that, but... Okay, so my question is, since we have a set of written minutes which differ, which are much shorter than the video, the video recordings will still be on the website and until what, such time that you decide to get rid of them, will you let us know? Sure. I guess my point is, like I said before, there are certain meetings that I would love to have the recording, and if they're going to disappear and I can't keep going to the website, I just wanted to know. So right now, since they're on the website, that's not a problem. Right. All right, thank you. Um, I also just wanted to mention, you know, we're beginning the work on the coming together uh, celebration of the Polish culture, and we have our first meeting with all of the people from the, all the partners tomorrow morning. Um, in Skokie, and so that's very exciting. And, and the library is working on picking the books that will be selected for the book discussions at three different levels, and then uh, then we'll be working with the author to try to bring an author in to go to high schools and uh, do programs at the libraries. So that's very exciting. Um, people are so excited when they're hearing that the culture this time is full. It's, people are just kind of overjoyed. Uh, I wanted to just tell you where we are with summer reading. We have. 1,777 summer reading kids this year, which is a really good number. Um, and then we have 129 teens, and then uh, the adult has been counted a little bit differently, but I just wanted to remind you that you can all be participating in the Great American Read. That is continuing through the summer and into the fall. And that's something where you can vote here at the library, and you can also go vote online. And then last of all, I wanted to take you through the statistics, because we're at the end of the fiscal year, so that means we have a year of statistics here. So, in on page uh, 43. We're not going to go line by line, because we would all fall into a coma. But um, I just wanted to kind of highlight a couple of things, because um, we don't look at these that often in, in depth. Um, I, one thing I want you to be aware of is that with the change to Polaris, some of the figures that we're getting are being pulled in a little bit of a different way. We're continuing to tweak that so the results are not quite as consistent as they normally are. And that will probably continue for a little while. Um, positive or negative? It's different for each thing. It's, it'll be that this is, it's usually more that this is moved from this category to that category. Wow. It's not that things have disappeared altogether. Okay. Um, so I just, uh, in case you've never noticed, the um, blue bands on here are the, uh, the lines uh, beneath it all feed into the blue, so these are compiled numbers, and if you want the detail, the detail is below it. Um, I wanted to point out to you that the one area where we're, our circulation is dropping every year, and I fully anticipate it will continue to do that, and that is, of course, the multimedia. All the stuff people are starting to stream now. Um, I think that will continue so, but I am actually really overjoyed that children's print was still up a little bit for the year, and people are doing a lot of that online now too, so I thought that was pretty great. Uh, I wanted you to be aware that the digital loan, the e-books, the e-audio books, that number um, is actually all ages combined together, so those are not in any of these three categories, we just get a big listing of all of them together, so it's not broken out by age group. Um, and that, as you can see, it was up 17.46% this year. So where, where is this? I'm trying to this is, is in the one, one the the order. Order. It's at the bottom of all of that. All right. Um, so another thing I just wanted to highlight for you is that there are numbers on here that are good numbers. They're solid numbers. They're based on a computer transaction or something that is just very definite. 
And then there are others that are more staff counted something or they estimated. The in-house use of materials counts the things that people looked at in the library, got left lying around, things like that. And so they still have to be reshelved. So in a way, it's mostly just accounting for the staff time that is going into getting those things back where they need to go. Um, and it's, you know, they're counting things, but you'll always, like in the picture book area, say you'll have people just reading a board book and putting it back, or or you'll have the, the opposite happening, you know, a kid pulling out a stack of 10 books and leaving it around. And, you know, so those are not firm numbers. They're, they're interesting to look at. They're not, you know, that is not anything that gets reported to the state, and it's mostly just for our own use to kind of figure out, you know, is the building being used like it was, are the collections being used like they were. Um, let's see, so another really firm number are the marketing and PR numbers because the number of clicks you get on Facebook, Facebook is counting that, so that's a good number. The numbers of the different notaries and test proctoring and passports, those are all really solid numbers. Voter registration are solid numbers. And then I also wanted to, um, but, but in contrast, the service interactions per service desk rely entirely on a person remembering to mark down that they have a service mm -hmm. interaction. So that number will almost always be actually much lower than it really is. Because uh, people just, you know, children's during the summer is three ring circus yeah. and they're just answering questions like this and they just don't get a chance always to put in their numbers. So that is another one where we do our best to track it. It's an interesting number, it's not nearly as firm as one that's, you know, it's something that's been scanned. So I just wanted you to be aware of some of the things that go into creating the statistics. And then I also, I was just gonna say, I've been in the children's department multiple times since our last meeting, and with the summer thing, it's always crazy. Yeah. Even during the day, during the week. Yeah, it's very hectic down so there. So it's very, I could see where it would be hectic to remark everything. Um, and then uh, I thought you might like to see that we do keep track of our interlibrary loans. We keep track of the things that are going out in and, and the things that we're sending out. Uh, we have a, a, the block here for the outreach services. And then I thought you also you know, should really pay attention to the volunteer line because we get so much work out of these people and we appreciate it so much. And um, you can see that uh, this top line here of the admin, tech services, maintenance, PR, and library event volunteers, there are only 29 of them. But they put in 289 hours. They're um, the ones doing a lot of things with the book sale and helping out with programs. Super helpful people. Um, and then uh, the last couple pages are just a, a straight listing of every program that we have had. And this is something where we don't have to give you this level of detail if you're not interested. Um, we still have to count everything for our uh, for the Illinois annual report mm -hmm. that I'll be filling out next month. You know, we're we counting it, but I just thought you're probably interested to see what we're doing, and it gives you a little glimpse of the life of the library that's going on. So I just kind of wanted to walk you through that a little bit. And I you know, was here um, for for the kids' lunch. Yeah, I was impressed with the volunteers you had. That did that unbelievable. They were very, very good, and I also was here for the. Uh, senior coffee or tea, whatever you call it, last week. That was totally cool. The guy talking about Illinois history, that was totally cool. I got one of his books. And also for the thing that went on today with the uh, woman that came and did it all. Man, the room was packed and there wasn't a sound to be heard. Everybody was fixed on her. She was fantastic. That's great. Definitely a person I think yeah. should be hired again. Good. That's Fantastic. Yeah, that was a Louisa Louis May Alcott. Oh, Louisa um, May Alcott. Yeah. She, yeah. she yeah. turned into her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. She turned into her. You know, she right. she portrayed her. It was very good. And then uh, later in the afternoon, uh, Pace, the, the bus, you know, the transit company was here doing a public hearing in that same room, and that's the same room where the school lunches were, and it's just kind of neat to see it cycling through throughout the day. Yeah. All these different people coming in. It was neat. Yeah, in between the uh, the senior thing last week and the kids' uh, lunch, yeah, I was there watching this changing of the guard. It was yeah. very interesting. Well, and shout out to Dave and his department for all the setting up and taking down they do. It's a bunch. So that is all I have for you. If you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them.
Um, I have some questions going back to page 43. Okay. So um, I do find these numbers interesting in terms of multimedia, audio, and visual going down. And that's anything we do have in a hard copy, for instance. Uh, a book that's on the audio tape would be in that category. Right. But, the on, but on the other hand, ones. if someone streams the same audio book, that would be in the other category. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. So, um, do you have any long range projections in terms of buying uh, audio books in the future? I mean, the actual hard copies and well, buying I mean, uh, movies on DVDs? Well, we'll continue to do it as long as people are still checking them out. And you can still see that, you know. They aren't checking out as many as they did, but they did, you know, check out what was it, two hundred eighty-one thousand six hundred sixty-nine in the adult. So I mean, there's still a great deal of demand for that, and this is frankly a community that does not give up formats easily. Um, I saw we had one that cassettes, and we kept our our, uh, our VHS for much longer than most other libraries. We kept our cassettes much longer uh, because there are a lot of people that still use the old technology, yeah. and we don't want to like cut. Cut them off. <laughs> and we bought them already. Still so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So, so uh, you know, we a lot a little less each year to to a, a forward format that's going out, and of course it becomes much less available to buy too. So gradually, it's kind of a you know, it just all. I, I think the CDs are getting increasingly hard to find, and so that collection is going to start to dwindle. It'll just be kind of. Do it itself, but so we keep moving the money a little bit more in the direction that people are. There's higher demand for. Uh -huh. And in terms of like streaming books, we have a couple of different sources for those, or a number of different sources, right? And, I mean, how does the pricing compare? Are you finding going forward in terms of the hard copy, uh, or let's say an audio book versus streaming a book? Is that oh, it, well, an audio book is like sixty dollars, say, for for the set of CDs. And but it might be Susie. Kind of say, it might be about that for the e audio version as well. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's yeah, the cost of an audio book is less than like putting them on the CDs. It's paying the narrator, you know, and producing it. Um, so the cost is really the same. Some of the ebooks will fluctuate. You know, it'll be cheaper in digital than it would be. But. All right. I was hoping it would be a lot cheaper, but it doesn't seem like it's going that no, way. No, actually, and, and you can actually get them cheaper on Amazon for you know residents, but that's not available to us. Then you know they're the companies, the publishers are really strict on making sure that we don't you know they'll, they'll have our things expire and have to repurchase them and things like that. It's a whole different market. Uh, and does anyone else have any questions? Just um, have questions on. Uh, Staffing changes. So, uh, Christy and Vicki part time positions, what were they doing before? Okay. They, well, they just were hired to do work in uh, the technical, not technical, patron services, the clerical jobs. The what? Patron services are the, the, the circulation clerks and the pages. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that check books out, do library cards, mm -hmm. place the, you know, put the holds on the shelf, manage all of that. So, were they here a long time? Or? Uh, let's see. No, I don't know if I'm preparing them well. No, they were like kind of in and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it kind of gives the impression that we see two part time positions leaving and then we see a full time position coming out. But they're different altogether. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, but, this, but that was from a previous month. That was You saw the retirement of the teen librarian that was a full-time position left a couple of months ago, and then the full-timer is replacing that position. So it's, these positions are all different. So, so, that, um, so the teen librarian was posted last month? Uh, that she probably was, two months ago. Yeah. Two months ago. She, yeah, she left right at the beginning of June. So. It was in either the May or the June okay. meeting. And of course, we wanted to rehire very quickly because it's summer and it's crazy down there. And so she came in as uh, the team use, so it's the same. She's, it, it's, she's filling the same. It's position. almost the same. Actually, Ariana is rearranging the responsibilities a little bit, and she um, is having her do some different, taking on some other programming responsibilities yeah. in addition to doing the team. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just uh, you know, I was thinking, okay, yeah, part time, a couple of part times are leaving, and so because of that, we're going to go ahead and hire somebody on. But I totally forgot about. No, we'll, 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 we'll replace the page with the page. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, the pages okay. are the shelvers. They're putting yeah. the books back on the shelf. Yeah. The librarian is a much more complex okay. job. Okay. Cool. Thanks.
other questions? Yeah. Well, finally, I want to you know, are you, guys, are you giving any serious consideration to the patron's suggestion that we have sleepovers here at the library? <laughs> well, I have asked it to the librarian because I was a young man when I was uh -huh. 13, 13. And right now I asked her to give him, you know, contact him because he wrote, I'm serious. And so, you know, to see what he has in mind. It, it's Is there a cost to that? There would be a cost to keeping the library open overnight. Yes, yes there would. Yes, it's, <laughs> so it's not anything we do because one kid wanted to do it. But, but still, you know, we want to respond to the things that they want to do. So. Would that affect our liability anymore since we have all these kids overnight? Or are we just... Well, we would have to set it up in a way that it was very carefully monitored. It wouldn't just be, you know, locking it in. But I meant because we, we would do something like that, which is not what whoever our insurance company is. You know, they figure we're closed at 9 o'clock. So no, we, we do lots of things in the library. So we co we're covered for a very wide range of activities in the library. So that would already be covered. I, I wasn't really sure that any. No, I don't think it's a good idea. Interested. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's do like to sleep. It's a fun thing to do. Yeah, it's just that you can cover the cost. But, um, you know, they can charge. You know, some some fees. They have overnights at museums. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 I think your parents are interested. Yeah, and I wonder where they are. Yeah, we did it with the scouts, but the parents were there. We went to some real nice places. Yeah, and I wonder if you know what the cost is. Well, and, and, and just to point out, if there's anything done before or after hours, we don't pay that person more for that extra time. It's they have a, a so many hours in their work week. So if this per, if if there was two hours before, or two hours after, we're not paying them two extra hours. They're taking two hours out in a different location. So we're not. It would not cost, but maybe twenty cents. Well, I don't know electricity. Not sad. Well, you'd also need to be concerned about who's going to end up leaving, because kids have a tendency to go to a sleepover and then disappear. I mean, there's a lot of risk. In oh yeah. It, well, it, this was just a patron yeah. suggestion. I answered it, and we're, yeah, we just could start talking about it, but we're nowhere near getting it in last month. All right. Thank you. Oh, we have a secretary's report tonight. Um, and uh, Diane, if you'd like to read it into the record, although I, I think there was one typo that was changed uh, regarding the date of uh, the uh, report. Instead of the seventh, I mean, Right. So if, if you would like to read into record the uh, report with the corrected data. Yes, I have the correct date. Great, thank you. A copy of Ordinance 18-03. In ordinance adopting the prevailing wage rates for laborers, workers, and mechanics employed by the Niles Main District Library was mailed to the Illinois Department of Labor on June 25, 2018. Publication of the notice of determination for ordinance 18-03 was made in the Niles Herald Spectator on Thursday, July 5, 2018. A certified copy of Ordinance 18-04, an ordinance for budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018 and ending June 30, 2019, along with a certificate of publication, was filed with the Cook County Clerk on Wednesday, July 11, 2018. The ordinance was published in the Niles Herald Spectator on Thursday, July 5th, 2018. Okay, all right, thank you very much. I don't think we need to go down there. Uh, it's just to be ready for the record. Since, since it's about the budget, can I ask a budget question? I just wanted an explanation on the term appropriations. Can I ask that now? Maybe Greg can remind me how that goes. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, what's the question? What the term appropriation? Yes. What, what it means? or In our budget, it? for example, our budget um, categories are a certain amount. Appropriations is usually double the amount of whatever the line yeah. item is. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out why that is. Like, it's, a, it's protecting us for some reason, and I don't yeah. remember uh, how yeah. that Yeah, Greg's mentioned that before, but I, I think yeah, they're going over that one more time. One yeah. Sure, Kurt. So, um, an appropriation is a legal spending limit? as opposed to the budget, which is uh, what uh, the board decides to uh, give the library to, uh, to run for a year. The reason that we double the uh, appropriation 
uh, where the appropriation has doubled the budget mm -hmm. is uh, because if we get a windfall um, and it has to be spent within the budget year, we need budgetary room in order to uh, uh, room in the appropriation in order to spend it. So, I mean, let's talk about it, talk about it in the extreme for, uh, for a moment. Let's say we get seven million dollars, okay, which is basically what our revenue line is, mm -hmm. um, and we have to spend it by June 30th, 2019. Well, at that point, the board can decide how to allocate it into the uh, into the budget areas okay. without having to go through another uh, appropriation round, mm -hmm. where you have to refile the appropriation after reapproving it and having the 30-day window for the uh, budget and appropriation hearing, okay. you know, basically you have to rerun the entire, right, right. The entire process. process. So that's what, you know, that's okay. that's why it's like that. One year we did try to make it smaller and tighter, um, and we had some issues with that, and we did have to do a little bit of that after the end of the year, which is very messy and very... Oh, I'm sure it is. And I'm not asking that we do that. I couldn't remember why we needed that elasticity mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So that, that appropriations are legal then it's mm -hmm. the amount of money we get spent. Right. And who determines that limit? We do. Well, I should so say the board does. Is it typical to have double? Do that. Uh, different philosophies, different takes on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, basically what the board is holding uh, uh, the administration to is the budget that they set and not the appropriation. So like if I lift $5,000 in my will, you can just spend it, yeah. right? Um, we're, we're, we're hoping for more. <laughs> you know, can I just ask you one other, I was looking at the budget, just one quick question. You know, we had a grant from the state, that I think it's 74,000. 71,605. It, it must be next year's, the 2018-19. And I noticed we added that to our budget. Now, wouldn't that be considered like, like when someone writes you a check for $100? I mean, it doesn't go into the budget, does it? It's both. It's a revenue line item. And we have to we have to spend it within the fiscal year. So you have to have a line item uh, that to gives us permission to okay. uh, to spend it. Okay, I didn't understand that. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, all right. So I think we left off on item ten, new business. All right. Do have a motion to approve reimbursing mm -hmm. Trustee Linda Bryan for a total of two thousand five hundred fifty-three dollars and twenty cents for her expenses associated with attending the annual conference of the American Library Board Association on June 21 to 24 in New Orleans. Do you have such a motion? Motion. Uh, I'll second. Okay, all right. Okay, um, do we have any discussion? And also, Linda, do you have some, maybe, doesn't have to be as part of this motion, but perhaps in, under unfinished business, we you give us a little report of your, mm -hmm. um, uh, the seminars or conference the materials that uh, mm -hmm. you yeah, I wasn't there. able to print it out because my son showed up at the last minute before I was leaving. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I have a soft maybe you can put it with the board packet or I can just email it to everyone. Um, um, it like the maybe it would be good for Because there's actually, links on it, you know um, what I mean? And then you can just go and well, would it be mm -hmm. best for you to Oh, right, because I can't email it to everyone. Yeah, you can either email it or if it's material that is easily copied, perhaps that could be on a board packet. I don't, I don't know what all it is. Yeah. Uh, well, a couple highlights that really I think are, um, I'll highlight, you know, the other things are maybe, you'd be interested in maybe not. You know, there were a couple things that went through that probably on my spot. Okay. All right. Any of the seminars, uh, did you think were particularly helpful in any way or? Well, I, you want me to talk about it now? Sure. Um, okay, sure. Well, okay. I, I mean, I guess it's related to this one. Okay. So um, the couple things that I saw that were, that I thought we really could benefit from, the, the one that I really, really liked, which has always been a big thing with me, especially working in a school, and also, um, you know, being a librarian with the public library, that we always pay the same money for the same databases, and it's the same taxing body. You know, we're paying 
for, say, opposing viewpoints at the school, and we're also paying for opposing viewpoints at the public library. We're still the same taxpayer, but we're kind of getting hit twice, you know? So it's always been a beef, it, you know, because the same kids are using or the same you know, patrons. So it was very interesting. So I went to this one summer, I forgot what it was called, um, but Atlanta merged and they are working together, public and school, and they're paying one fee and their the public library is actually paying it, but all the kids are accessing and they're not paying it to the school any longer. And it took a long um, it was a long process. Really, really paying it well, the public library is paying it. They're um, tapping into the public library's account. You know what I mean? There's a code, just like you would use your patron code yeah. to log in, and you would access the database. Is the school paying the library anything so that their students no, can No, because the students are within the district. Within the district. I see. So it's Peter they're Paul not paying. Time. Right, right. But it was all the whole access and how you get them in. And then also they had a, a thing, and I had all my notes, and you know, you're listening fast and you're writing, and you know, so I don't know how much I have perfect for now. But the other thing that was really interesting, according to our strategic plan on how we want to increase our patrons, you know, that's one of our goals. Well, they do it where every single kindergartner has to have a library card. And that like increased their patron, and not only that, then the kids learn right away how to become, you know, a, li a, a, a library exactly. a patron, how to actually become a user. They're allowed to check out five books, you know, they have, and um, right away they're, they're learning and it's integrating and it's building community. It's like everything that we're, you know, we're striving for. Um, so they just had so many things that they had to, there were so many walls and barriers that they had to go through to get this done. Um, but they have everything to where they could help other people go through it. I'm not saying that it's that we could do it, but it was it's done. It's being done. So like that, I didn't even know that it was being done. You know. So and you're talking Atlanta. So I mean, you're not talking a little town. You know. So um, I think it's something we should like at least look into and see how they've done it. If it's feasible. And, how I, and it, it really did sound like there were a, a lot of, um, like I said, barriers, but they got through it and figured out how to move forward and make it work. And they use um, the students' birthdays because everything is um, different, you know, each one is different rather than a school ID number. You know, they figured out what codes, how to, you know, how to log in. So it was just really interesting. So again, you hear it within like 45 minutes. You know what I mean? And you get as much notes, but I think it's something we can definitely look into. The other thing that I saw that was really, out of all the seminars and everything that I had gone to, um, which uh, was this Become a Sister Library, and I had said that to uh, Susan when I was there, I'm like, do you know that there you can become a sister library? Because I've always heard about sister cities, and that, but I never knew. Did you know that they had sister library? No, me neither. What does it mean? <laughs> I, I mean, you. What you do is they have a whole listing, and if you want to become a sister, like Sister City, you just um, sign up, and there's a whole list on the website of people who want to become a sister library. So, so the people that were there were um, a librarian from Buenos Aires and the LA librarian, and who actually just in 2015 won the national. Um, award for a library museum at, in, uh, in Washington DC from Michelle Obama and um, but they the reason why one of the reasons why they won was because when you become a sister city a uh, sister library it could be as simple as creating display in your library and showing each other's culture it could be that simple um, pen pal type things you know very simple but what they did actually is when Buenos Aires um, whoever their you know, maybe their chief uh, staff happened to come to LA and went to LA uh, libraries. They were like, "Holy cow! This is what a library is supposed to look like." You know, because they had nothing comparable. And they said, "Let's model one of our libraries exactly how an LA library is." So they made this am amazing impact. LA did to Buenos Aires, and they created this library that was state of the art, based on their sister. 
So it could be a school library, it could be academic to academic, and public to public. There's a whole listing, um, and you can just pick and choose based on. And you know, there's no expense to. There's no expense, and there's actually um, there's even guidelines of you know it could be this simple or it could be this extensive, mm -hmm. and they're maybe saying um, you know uh, they showed LA's where LA had a, a just a section like maybe we would have the um, the uh, uh, what is it the the veterans yeah, yeah. Right. you know something as simple as that. But it would be all about Buenos Aires, their culture, and their, you know what I mean, and say this is our sister, you know, I have a banner, sister, you know, and, um, you know, something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then it, it is, it's the communications, it's just, you, of course you'd have to have someone who kind of is creating that communication and, and building that relationship. You always have to have someone who's, you know, there to, even if it's, that's part of your internship of kids that come in that, you know, summer, whoever it is. Um, there is someone that you have to kind of give that role to, to keep that relationship being built. Um, I just think it was sort of a really cool thing to do. Um, and it still, it, it, it just branches out, building community beyond our community, you know. Um, and it doesn't have to be national, it could be, you know, it doesn't have to be worldly, it could be within our um, states. And so I just had, I just had never heard of it. And there's lists of libraries that already want to be a sister library that you can just choose and say, hey, you want to be a sister? Okay. You know, so, um, and LA actually had two sister libraries. So I just thought that's something we could mm -hmm. do. And it's, um, and, and they also said one thing was, look at the community that you're from, kind of like you were saying the Polish, how people are so excited because of, we have so many, um, Polish patrons, find within your community what type of um, culture may really, you know, kind of build some um, excitement. Yeah, excitement and relevance. Exactly, connection, relevance, exactly. And they said definitely look at that, and that would definitely be the way maybe you'd want to choose your sister city, um, and that to get you know stakeholders within and uh, get people involved. So, but there's a, there's a whole um, group. Oh, and then another thing that was uh, that I had seen too. Um, I had gone to a uh, United for Libraries. That's the Association of Library Trustees, Advocates, Friends, and Foundations. Um, this was interesting. Uh, you know, you just have like a discussion. You just talk. That they talked about programming and budget. Um, but here it says, help your friends increase funding for your library. According to a recent survey, friend groups raise an average of $50,000 per year at the local level. So I just thought that that was like, I mean, that's right on their card. That, I'm not saying that that's what is, but it Did it is. say for what size library that would Because according it? to your recent, friends groups raise an average of $50,000 per year at the local level. So I mean, it's just could be total. It's hard to. Yeah, uh, but I mean, it's you know, you know so it's what it's, it's what the friends should be. You know, I'm not saying that that's what, but it, it's just I was a, you know. Is that on the raising. library card? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's on their library, and I put this on my sheet too that I was going to give to everyone. It has their um, their website, their phone number, you know, their um, and their tag. So Meaning the friends groups. The the United for Libraries. The, oh, this I, for the ALA, you know, if you um, want to look up anything that um, they're promoting. Oh, or I thought you were saying on our library. Oh, yeah, you no. should put something that says friends, like something about friends, so everyone who comes here would know they should go through friends. Oh, to I see what you're saying. Do right, to raise help. funds for the library. Right. That's what I was saying. Yeah, this is, well, this is just to but that's get an ideas, us. right? Yeah. It's just ideas okay. and what All other right. people are doing. and. Um, so that's their foundation. And then I went to just other ones, um, like, and I'll give this to the teen librarians, and I have links on my page, um, 2018 Best Apps for uh, Teaching and Learning. Great for, you know, of course, I'm, I'm you know, young adult. I look, I go to a lot of uh, events for that. But um, these are all the 2018 Best um, Websites and Best Apps. So, and I have, uh, actually um, summaries of all of them, so I get some in the team librarians too. Um, and I have, it would give us many copies of the bookmarks. They can actually um, do that. And 
think that's everything we have. Okay, so you'll be giving materials and links yeah. to Susan to just oh, Right, I have us. all of that. And, and I know I went to a few more um, events. I just you yeah, can discuss really those great. at uh, future meetings if you, you know, want yeah. to discuss any other details or any ideas. With respect to the sister cities, is this, uh, are any staff members looking into that and the feasibility of that? I think we would want to vote on it as a board as to whether or not we want it to become a sister city to a specific city, but just uh, the feasibility of it and the expense of it, I think, is something that we want to be familiar with before voting on that. Okay. Is it, is it perhaps something the staff could look into? Sure, I mean, we have not seriously started yeah. approaching this. I mean, right. it's, it's, that I don't think there's a hurry, or, yeah. you know, but at yeah. some point we might want to just talk about it and consider it and maybe do it or not. Yeah. You know what, um, Al, schools in the area um, get involved with sister cities for pen pals or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we would want to join, if we knew that schools around here were doing that and we wanted to back on that as well. I don't know. I'm not sure what the whole scope is, but I know that that also happens in schools that they could benefit us or help us get direction. But I did hear about that as well. Okay. It would be an interesting concept. Sure, it might be a good thing to see if I to look at. Yeah, just during really. During the sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's what I'm uh, yeah, the, in Atlanta, it was um, the public and school library card for 114,000 students that they're so, so Yeah, it's like a big good. deal. Yeah, they Maybe. built a contract and they share the resources, so they pay only one fee for money databases, and all kindergartners have signed up for library cards. 114,000? Yeah. Wait a minute, I'm yeah. confused. Is this the... Library taking on the This is the sharing expense. of the resource. Like, so that the schools then don't have to pay for the resource. They use, well, they you know, use. I have a question about that. A school's budget is like 10 times our budget. Why would we be absorbing the cost and not the school well, district? Well, we pay for it anyway. I mean, we have it anyway. That's well, why I mean, we well, need to. That's why well, we that need be, to. That could be a whole different. Yeah, that's why I think even one of the taxpayers made a comment that it looks like the schools and the library are both spending money on the same Well, expenses. the only thing is, is a school, Which is something to look but at. a school, you can't have adults that are going into the school databases. You know, I mean, but you can have the school going into the public library databases. It can't go the other way. Well, you I'm can't saying, have all patrons going into school databases. Well, so, what I'm saying before we take on a, before we relinquish a debt from a school district, which I wish we had their money, we should look into this. Oh, definitely. Our right. budget but is nowhere near the district. And, 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 and maybe anyway, it's just an idea. It's yeah. just yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's an no interesting votes. idea to explore and see maybe we could split it. Or maybe we could share the cards. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. And just share the one of the We have many more questions. We can talk to them too. I mean, yeah. like, I'm sure I don't I'm know all the ins and outs. Yeah, no, I think it's an interesting idea. It's probably more about negotiating the contract with the vendors. Getting the best price. Right, and they said that the vendors were still trying to up the costs. Right. You know, even so. No, um, and uh, of course they have the same issues, afraid to get a library card because afraid of fines, you know, some people, um, they students use their lunch number and their PIN number is their birthday, that's what it is. Um, they had to pass an account, they had to get an MOA there to get a memorandum of agreement. Um, they had to do an opt out. They had, you know, that's the library cards, right? That's the FERPA, right, yeah. they had to do the family education privacy agreement. Um, yeah, no, I have been doing some research into that. And I am actually meeting with the new principal of Culver School next week. She reached out to us, which mm -hmm. we were planning to reach oh, out to her and nice. she us to it. So, well, yeah. Maybe you could put on the agenda jointly like sharing some expenses, like mm -hmm. databases. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's that. Although I, this is more to do with the library cards. Um, the, uh, this, a great school is probably not spending anything on databases, really, so it's not. It's more of a high school thing, I think. Right. They yeah. have, like, maybe an school number drive. Yeah. I know that's what we have in our um, yeah. entries, right? So, I mean, we had certainly talked we about that. Overdrive. Are you kidding? So oh, I mean, EBSCO and opposing viewpoints. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I meant to mm -hmm. say. I was reading overdrive. 
<laughs> well, it's just, just kind of to help our school buying something that we have here because all of their students can be can be card members here. But so they do you know, already. If they have a card, they right. can use it. That's exactly right. What I'm right. Saying. Yeah. So yeah. it's right. good to have a conversation with them about that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so those are just some things that um, you know. I try to go through things that would benefit us. Okay, well, we look forward to getting more information okay, next sure, to the you. first uh, uh, Susan. Nice. So are there any other uh, questions regarding the motion on the table? Actually, yeah. I have a question. Uh, yeah, yes. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. You can go first. You be I just wondered what are the extraordinary expenses? Uh, those were the events that she attended that had a cost, like the uh, awarding of the Prince Medal, say. There are oh, okay. a number of awards that are given out there, and there's some guys that take it with them. And just leaving the thrifty guy, you know, Hotel Trovado. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a very thrifty guy, uh, but, you know, the money's there. They're all the same. All the hotels are the same. They all have credit. They don't want to just take one. Yes. When you have a conference, uh, the hotel rates are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I know. If you're going to stay at the hotel with the conference, it's convenient. And, you know, well, it's, and yeah. more importantly, there's a consortium of hotels that supply rooms to the conference. Yeah. You know, and it's most of the hotels within walking distance. I know. And if you don't stay, then you got car expense if you're too far away. You know, I've been well, there's right a now. big difference if you're in New Orleans yeah. and you're not right next door. You yeah. can save a bundle and eat an Uber. So there's different ways. But um, if you're That's not why I didn't question. <laughs> did you have a question? I did. Um, actually, um, I don't believe that um, the cost of the hotel is strictly because they're part of a consortium. I think it has something to do with when you finally schedule your trip. Um, it's sort of, I, I actually pulled the expenses because I wanted to, I don't understand our expense report, but I was looking at how we break it down, and we do break it down lunch and dinner. And um, I just had a question. For some reason, the tips for the meals are separate. Shouldn't that be included in the total cost of the meal? You break it down separately? Break it out. You do? You break it out? Yeah. Okay. I just, because I've never done that. We just include ours. But my question is, I noticed Susie Wolf scheduled her trip way in April, and her um, transportation or airfare was $358. Linda... You, you scheduled it on the 15th and the trip was the 21st. I mean, your transportation was like $758. Um, I have to say, I understand we're trustees and we have a right to go, or, I mean, we're entitled to, or you think we should use our budget line to go to conferences, but I think when it's a week before the event and the prices are exorbitant, I think maybe we should rethink it because, um, your total is twenty five fifty three, and it, it's quite a bit. And I just, well, I feel like we're abusing. Actually, actually I have an answer for that. Um, well, and then, let me just, I'm not okay. done yet. And then I looked at Judith McNulty, who's from Adult Service. Her total was 1300 Yours is twenty five. Susie's is 1200 Now, you know what? They're employees spending a lot less than we are. I think we should mirror what the anticipation is or the expectation is for these employees as opposed to just I mean that's a thousand dollars more than what it costs two of our um, staff to attend and I, I have a problem with that I just right. think we need to be more aware of, of how much we are spending or how we're spending it but go ahead whatever you want to say so let me add some information uh, generally speaking, when employees uh, decide to go to a conference and seek approval and get permission, uh, things like the uh, airfare and the conference fees are bought through the library uh, on the library card. What you're seeing, um, probably for Judy as well as for uh, Susie, is uh, the hotel part of their trip, uh, maybe their incidentals, uh, tips, transportation to and from the airport, however they got there. So you're not seeing the entire picture. So the $1,200 number or the $1,300 number is not directly comparable 
to what uh, to what Linda's expense report shows because hers is all inclusive of things like the conference fee and the uh, the airfare that she paid. Well, I believe they're filling out the same form. Um, you have an expense report, mm -hmm. and each of the three women who went to this conference filled it out, and they filled out registration, transportation, I mean, they all have the same thing. The only difference is the total. Judith McNulty totaled at 1348, Susie Wolf at 1236, Linda Ryan at 2553. It's the exact same report. So everything's included. Well, I think it's partly our fault because Linda and I, I think, had a little, and Diane and I had a little bit of a miscommunication, and so hers got, did get put in much later than the other. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you can't plan it sooner than a week before, maybe you should go to the next one and save the library some money because that's quite a bit. That's just my take on it because it would never be acceptable in any other governmental body. I'm not sure about that. But well, at least all the ones I've worked for. Um, are there any other questions? Yeah, I don't think that we need this. I've never seen the entire travel expense report um, for anybody's well, travel. This is, this is the first time that we've had to do this under the travel Travel Control Governor. Expense Act, and so this form, yeah, so this is the first time oh. that the law right. is that it has to be report. voted on in open session, we'll call vote. Yeah. That is the law. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say other conferences. Right. Okay. No, other no. conferences, I don't remember going through this either. Nope. This way. You never did. Okay. Ah. Hmm. Ah. Yeah. All right, so, um, the motion's on the floor. We had discussion. Uh, could I roll call now? Uh, Karen? Oh, uh, yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? You know, uh, the money's been appropriated. Uh, she, she took it. I, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of spending money, but, you know, we got paid, though. Uh, since yes. Unfortunately. Diane? Yes. Annie? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, all right. Next, we need a motion to approve the expenditure of $6,245.88 from the special reserve fund for seven network switches from CDW Government LLC. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Right. Um, any questions about uh, this purchase? You want to talk about it? Yeah. I had a question, but if they want to just explain it. Um, well, what's your question? Um, I remember at our last meeting, um, we, well, uh, previously, I can't say for sure it was last month, we used NASPO for pricing because we're part of that group. Um, were they able to quote this as well? Uh, this is the rate, and it works a little bit differently. So what happens is um, uh, Rich Wasnichka puts together a plan for the year and submits it for approval to E-Rate um, in terms of what they will and what they will not uh, provide money for. At that point, the, uh, uh, the work goes out to bid. Uh, on a very broad basis. Meaning this went out. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we get a number of uh, bidders uh, who uh, uh, pitch us with uh, prices and so forth through the E-rate program. So it's really through the federal purchasing uh, program. So you have to be a vendor that's mm -hmm. part of the E-rate program, which NASPO would not be. NASPO is an association, uh, and it does not have products per se, they, what they do is they negotiate their own contracts with CDW government, for example. Oh, okay. So, but in this case, CDW government does not bid through NASPO, but through the E-rate program. Okay, that okay. makes sense. So, uh, as you can see, um, they have a vested, the government, the federal government has a vested interest yeah. in this because they're uh, funding 80% or about $25,000. And uh, what we get in return is, uh, <laughs> is the switches. 
No, and, and that's a great rate. I was only thinking if we could go to someone who would charge us less, then mm -hmm. you know, we can get E-rate to buy us more stuff, but I got it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yep. And? Yes. 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 I do have a motion to approve a change order to the awarded uh, Metro Decorating Incorporated Contract in the of 4800 for the exterior painting of a library building, bringing the total contract building, full contract value to $49,000. Do I have such a motion? Yes. Second motion. Good there? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, can you tell us about this? Uh, it's just the upgrade uh, of the paint, because they have, what, the, what the bid was going to do for the paint was not the elasticity, it was a little apart, it's a different type of paint. Okay. So uh, there has to be. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll call it a, a, a rubber component in the uh, in the paint. The, the actual paint is called elastomeric, mm -hmm. and uh, what that does is it it moves with the building as the building expands and contracts, uh, mm -hmm. as, you know, in, uh, in response to temperature changes. And uh, this type of paint prevents cracking and, and flaking and having to maintain it uh, as a result. So um, what Nedro had bid was a lower grade of paint, and we knew that. And I had mentioned that when, we had, when the board had approved the uh, contract initially. Um, but even you know, as you see, uh, even with the additional forty eight hundred dollars, um, Nedro was still well below continental construction. So did our bid specify the lower grade of paint, and then we decided that we really need the higher uh, grade of paint? Or? It did not. It did not. Did that specify at all? It, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then we later decided right. that we needed this higher grade of paint. Well, we did, you know, we left the bid. It was an error not to specify it. I see. Otherwise, we should have avoided this. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and everybody came back with the last one there, uh, paint, and uh, Metro did not. But, you know, it's not the paint. It's the labor, really, that, uh, you know, the fine thing. So the cost is really for increased labor, not the gallons? No, the total cost of the contract is what I was referring to. Oh, oh I gotcha. Okay. Sure. Can I just ask one question? Yeah. I looked at the original bid, which I think was from May. They never filled out uh, their breakdown for the bid. They just gave you a 44200 So how do we know what they're really spending on any of this? Well, it, it, we took the view that uh, they were so far below continental construction, and, their, uh, and they did check out through our due diligence that um, to disqualify them because they didn't fill out that particular grid would immediately double our cost to $106,000. Well, I don't know about disqualify them, but I'd like to know what they're spending on um, these particular items because how on earth do we know what they were spending on paint anyway? I mean, primer coats, finished coats. I mean, maybe they didn't submit it to you initially, but don't we want to know that? I mean, if everyone else had to no, we fill can. it out. I didn't realize that we actually approved it, and there's no breakdown of their bid or what they're doing. I mean, yeah, that's you kind of blindly. Do you know these people? Is that why you are comfortable with accepting it? Uh, we do not know that. Uh, oh. But we did do extensive uh, reference checking on them. They have done a number of projects uh, throughout uh, the greater Chicago area. Uh, libraries, schools, other government buildings. Well, I think so it's forth. safe. It's, I think it's just a safe practice to expect a, a person who is receiving a bid to tell you exactly what they're doing. We can do that. Oh, I appreciate a copy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. She's looking for. I think she's looking for a copy of what they're going to do. So. I think she's looking, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, Carolyn, I think what you're looking for is... This to be completed. There's a, there's a form. And everyone else. So I just wanted to know what they're doing. So if I was to compare them with everyone else, I mean, not that I am, but at least I know what they're doing. They, they just skipped it off. 
to be honest, it seemed like on when you looked at the bids, like most of them were just kind of slapping numbers up there. I mean, it was really the total cost is what the point was, and they because they you know one would say twenty five thousand dollars for this, and the other one would have it four thousand dollars, but they turned twenty five thousand dollars for something well, else. Well, Susan, in, in so response it, to this issue about the paint, if we knew what they were spending on primer and, and so forth we could have a better idea of what they would need to increase it from two. We have no clue. So those yeah, numbers really are valid. It was a good learning experience, understanding that you need to have that, that paint that's, that's going to expand mm -hmm. the track. Because I, I looked at it after the issue came up about the paint, and I was dumbfounded as I looked at it. I'll, I'll bid, bid the crack that was on, on the frame. The paint, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I didn't even realize paint needed to be elastic. Okay. All right. Um, unless there's any other questions, uh, let's go roll call on the change order motion. Yes. Um, yes, with a copy of the original bid, of course. Thanks. Dennis? Yeah. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is there any unfinished business that we need to attend to? Um. I have some others. Is that after I'm finished? Yes, it is. Okay, sorry. I have some others also. Okay. Other? Other? Would you like to go first here? No, no, I'm good. Okay. I'm still writing notes. Okay, she's still writing notes, so I'll go. Uh, what I'd like to say is yes, I've I've been in the library quite a bit lately, and I have several compliments for the children's department. Uh, one was, again, God help me, <laughs> my granddaughter, poofs, and I'm looking for her, and I'm calling her name. The librarian came up to me and said, without me asking, you have a child missing, how old, what do they look like, do you know their clothes, what clothes they're wearing, all this. I gave her all the information. She went and immediately did a code at them. She went out to the hall and told them out in the hall, keep an eye out for a four-year-old child that's dressed like this. I was totally impressed with how cool, calm, and collected, and how quickly the other librarian found her and said, hey, check over there. She didn't want to disturb her because she figured she didn't know her. It was fantastic. I was very impressed. Um, that was a code Adam without me actually asking to be physical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing was, again, the children's department. Um, I, there again, was not paying attention to the time we arrived. And on the weekend, um, she comes charging in with her cart, holding it up for the summer program, and the girls were packed up that volunteered to work that, and they would say, well, we'll stay, and the librarian said, no, you go home. And she came over to help us. She said, you know, we're usually done by this time because we have to pack up, but I'll do it for her. And I thanked her very much, whatever. I came back at a later date. She was working along with her department chair. And I said, do you know who I am? And she said, uh, oh, no, should I? <laughs> and I said, no. And because you said that, I'm definitely going to compliment you at the meeting. Because if they do it because I'm a board member, then you think I'll get in. But she didn't know I was a board member. So I definitely wanted to say how much I appreciate the children's department. Well, I have to say, anyone who works with children really cares about <laughs> children. <laughs> yes, and I'm sure you know it happens. And like I said, the programs I came to, unbelievable. The one this morning, unbelievable. They're both very good. Great. Okay. Um. Oh, and <laughs> I have. Uh, Trying to remember her name. I've got it written here. Uh, no, I don't. Anyway, um, the one who does the silhouettes and stuff, 
Bernadetta. Bernadetta, thank you. She met with me. She's just, she's funny. I like her. <laughs> anyway, she met with me with the button maker to show me how they make their bottle opener keychain buttons, which I have here. They're really cool. And I couldn't believe how fast, you have pictures of them doing it. I couldn't believe how fast these things are to make. I have the old fashioned button maker. It <laughs> takes us like forever because you got to turn this, do this, flip this, do this, turn this, do this. But she was like talking to me and she said, oh, you put this here, this here, click, the thing turns, and then this, click. I'm like, what? You're done? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I'm buying a new button maker because of this. This was totally cool. Um, yes, and I wanted to thank her again. And um, she said to make sure all of the uh, board members know how much they would appreciate if we came and even just observed any of their workshops. Okay. Thank that you again. Fun. Yes. Uh, we had some other other. Oh yes, yes. Um, my first one is regarding the Assistant Attorney General's letter, Marie Hollister. I spoke with her on July 9th, and that's the person who wrote the letter that Karen Diamond uh, distributed. Um, let's see. I spoke with Marie Hollister, the Assistant Attorney General, who wrote the letter regarding the village of Kappa, which Karen Diamond provided copies at our last meeting. I told Marie Hollister that I received a copy of this letter and had a couple of questions for her. I told her I am a trustee at the Niles Main Library Board and I was denied the opportunity to speak during public comments. The reason was due to your letter. My question to you is, are you stating that the elected officials in my suburban area who leave their trustee seat and give public comments as residents are in violation? She replied, I never said any such thing. She said, you need to refer to the last paragraph which addresses this. So in her letter, her last paragraph says, Because your complaint that Trustee Chambers was prevented from speaking at the meetings does not allege a violation of OMA, this office, meaning Marie Hollister's office, has no authority to address your complaint and will take no further action with respect to this matter. This letter serves to close this file. She also said, after that, there is no further inquiry and no official determination in OMA. So the sentence that you highlighted is, in her words, affirmative and negative statements, but it was not a decision from this office. So I would recommend that either, I thought Karen Diamond brought this to us. I just figured it was from downtown where you work and you knew these people, but Susan, since you were the person who conversed with somebody, I think um, we need in writing um, to dispute what you're saying, because I had a conversation with this person and she denied it. I think so, she, she said that wasn't actually the holding of the, or there wasn't the focus of the letter, the holding of the letter. She said that. But what she said in the letter, she did say in the letter. No, but she said, there's a, everything in the letter comes down to the last paragraph, that they are not addressed, they can, their office has no authority to address your complaint. So she didn't state one way or the other. She says, there's no further action to respect to this matter. And when I asked her, as a trustee, when we leave our seats as residents, are you saying we're in violation? She said, I said no such thing. So there's a lot of uh, room. Well, she didn't say you were in violation. This oh, person was a trustee, and I said, because you said this trustee, or according to this board, mm -hmm. this trustee was denied the right to speak, so my board says I can't go 
in public, go um, to speak in public comments as a resident. I said, are you saying I'm in violation for that? She said, I said no such thing. So what we're doing is mixing things up here. When a trustee leaves their seat to stand in public comments, they are not standing there as a trustee, and everybody knows it. They stand there as a resident. That's why you give your address, because you are like every other taxpayer who may be coming to this meeting. This letter does not serve to deny a trustee the right to leave their seat and give public comments. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Well, Carolyn, it might be your interpretation of it. But it's not my interpretation. But Please feel free to I'll, call, I'll call Marie, call no, Marie Hollister I don't, I don't and have her put it in writing, and I'll be glad to hear it. Well, well what, what they do is they actually rule on actual complaints about the Open Meetings Act, one way or the other. Um, in this case, someone filed a complaint saying that a trustee was prevented from speaking, and the AG's office found that preventing a trustee from speaking was not a violation of the OMA. Um, it, she didn't. She didn't say. Would not say that you violated the. No, it's the, no, 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 the, it's the same. No, no, no. So no. She said that, that trustee not to speak or me not to speak is the same thing. Her office has no authority to address the complaint. But she it's said it's it doesn't it's violate the OMA, and that's why they don't have address. Rather, and authority to address the complaint. Rather than argue about he said, she said, or whatever said, mm -hmm. could, could somebody just ask to write in plain English, not in legalese, but in plain English, can a trustee get up in front of the board and residents of that area can speak? It, it's a simple thing. Mm -hmm. we don't, I don't think we need to re relate back to a to a, a decision in some other board or something else, but what is the rule, plain and simple, mm -hmm. no legal ease? Thank you, Dennis. So my point is, this letter does not serve to deny anybody on this board to make public comments until we get some kind of ruling from a government office. Well, I, I think that's what this is right here. No, that's, you know what, then I'll e call her because she I mean, told me that's read, not what it read, stated. Read the sentence, it says. It, it says, doesn't mean, Karen, I don't want, you know what, I need to move on. I have two other things. You've talked us to death about making a statement and trying to use your orange highlight, and she said that is not what she said. So, I mean, we're, we've discussed it until we're really in the face. Until there's a document from a governmental body that tells me, as a trustee, I cannot get up and give public comments as a resident, there's no, there's no reason why I should be denied. So my second item on the other... Wait, 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 wait. In the last paragraph clearly states that when a trustee was prevented from speaking at a meeting, that prevention does, did not allege a violation of the Open Meeting Act. was not a violation of the Open Meeting Act. It's not in the meeting, then. That's it what is. she's saying. No, that is exactly what the Open Meeting Act is. No, I talked to the woman, and I don't want, I don't want to split hairs here, right. okay? Yes. I, what, what's, wrong, wrong, what's wrong hair? with getting something... Exactly. I don't, I don't yes, think they're going to provide anything besides this. No, they I don't have think to. Going, no, they don't. What, no, they what, don't. Well, what body would? There, there's, there the, has to be this somebody. This is the wrong body. There, there exactly. has to be somebody no, that has to She control. told me this is not the body to make that decision. Karen, you know that. Wait, wait. So, 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 I mean, just a minute, just a minute. So, so who, you as is, is being the president of this board, mm -hmm. And who would we go to for uh, some information? Would it be well, the you lawyer? could, you could also, you could also contact the Office of the Attorney General and say that a recent board meeting, I stated that board members um, do not have the right to participate during public comment um, because they are board members. Um, and you could ask for a ruling on that. Just I, I, like, I, I, just like this. But isn't there, isn't there a policy? Karen, I already did what you're telling me to do. I called saying. and said, based on your okay. letter, All right, well, I have been denied, and she told me that is not what she I'm stated. Not okay, really sure. so I and I agree. Okay. Dennis's Can we recommendation is go to a governmental body. All right, why why don't you write? Right no, I will not. We're, we well, are that, saying if you that until write, a governmental clear. body rules. You can definitively, get up we can get up and make public comments. No. Done. And yes. I, 
I should be a policy. Get, so please, you cannot, you cannot else. prevent us. Yeah. If the lady who wrote this right. letter told yeah. me I can't you right. it. Wait, so I already there, talked there. There should be somebody that has a policy. There is, and it's not this yeah. office she told me. And Karen, you know the law. Don't you work as a lawyer downtown? Yeah. Well, well, that's what I'm telling you. We need you something you don't, in the I spoke to her in length. I don't need the right to her. She already told me. As president of this board, oh, that's right. Can we lower our voices in your way, please? Mm -hmm. Well, but as president of the board, mm -hmm. I, I I don't see where it's not unfair to ask that you help this board. Uh, resolve this issue by right. going to the appropriate people to get something in plain English. I, when I read that, it's it's not as clear to me as somebody saying uh, trustees at a library board uh, meeting can or cannot get up in, during the meeting and, and speak before. It's it's so simple as that, and and from a, a certain. You know, authority. I'm assuming there's policies. They have the Open Meetings Act, and so I'm sure. I'm sure that there's there's policy somewhere that state yes or no. And again, at looking to you as the president of the, of the uh, uh, board, I, you know. Well, I, I was delighted when I received this because I believe this does provide us with the but, items okay. that we had not prepared for, for, for received but, from the Office of the Attorney General. So, and they are the agency in the state of Illinois that interprets so, and enforces the Open Meetings Act. And and before, so, and we remember the first meeting, I, I said, go ahead and speak, Dennis, because yeah, I no, really, that was, at that, that is, time, yes, I didn't yes, know yes. that the Office of the Attorney yes. General had opined on this issue. Then it was brought to my attention that they actually did have a, well, have an identical it. situation come up and that they had issued an opinion already on this it very is, topic. It is so, so, so where does it say in there that a trustee cannot get up in a meeting and speak at that meeting? Where it, does it, it say it that? It doesn't say that. I, I know that. May so, I, may so, I just, so, I, as the open meetings officer of this board, let me just explain. It doesn't say it violates the Open Meetings Act for you to talk. What it says is you don't have a right under the Open Meetings Act to speak in public comments. So what's so, it mean? So it means that the members of the general public have a right to come and address this body because that's their only chance to address this body. But you as a member of the body already have the right to address the body. It, at sitting what point? At what point? At what point? That other person now, so, so, for example, during other persons, which was being done. Can I now? go on the record just making a no. statement? That's why I brought this up. Well, I actually think Dennis is still speaking. I, 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 am still, I am still speaking. Thank you okay, for trying to clear for me. I, I, I've asked a question, and, and, and rather than uh, um, helping out in resolving the issue, you're, you continue to point back to another document, and, 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 and my Good friend over there, Patty said, "Thank you. Let's get something nice and clear." And and, and so I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can get something from a group that very clearly states, not uh, this party of that part of this part of this part, but a trustee that is part of a board can or cannot get up. And speak during public comments. during public comments, and I would think that that is not a real hard request. And, and to come back and say, "Well, I think that this does that," no, no, it doesn't, because it it, it does not clearly state that. It I does agree. not. Well, um, and, and if you don't want to do. It, I'm suggesting that you write yourself. No, why, why should I? I I'm well, looking to you as the president of this board. Because I'm, I'm satisfied with this oh, guy. Oh, I know, but because you're a lawyer. Problem. You're a lawyer. But I, I don't know that, um, I'm not sure that anything that you would receive from me no, would no. be any more clear to you than no, that this is. Karen, I think you're so clear. Karen, um, as president. And if you, Karen, you know, wait, I'm still. Um, you know, if, if for some reason or other you, um, you, you don't find it satisfactory, you can write to them yourself and... But you're, you're ruling, you're, you're, you're saying, you're saying, and you're ruling that I can't get up. So so you're ruling, so that's 
fits your opinion. And I've, I've asked for a simple question. I've asked for a simple question for our president of this board to just come out and get a comment from the appropriate people saying a trustee can get up before the board during public comments. Yes, he can, or no, he can. And apparently, she doesn't want to go ahead and, and, and go that extra mile. And why don't you want to go ahead? Why should I have to? I, I, I think because I'm, I'm the right. Because you're the member who wants I think to stand right. up and talk. They I think I'm right. OK, you know what? I, I feel like this was points. my time to talk. Can I get my yeah, sentence out here? Did everyone jump in? It? OK, for starters, my first item under other is regarding the letter that Karen Diamond gave us from me, Marie Hollister. I'm bringing this up because Karen Diamond believes as trustees we are not allowed to get up and give public comments as residents. I called Marie Hollister. I specifically asked her, are you saying, here, are you stating that the elected officials in my suburban area who leave their trustee seats and give public comments as residents are in violation? She replied, I never said any such thing. She said to refer to the last paragraph of her letter that addresses this. Now, Karen, she is denying what you claim is the reason why we can't speak. And you're using her letter to do it. So no, I'm contradicting you. You know, I'm going to assume what you're okay. saying she okay. said. Uh, isn't that what she said? If I agree that you would not be in violation of the Open Meetings Act if you were to come up here and were to allow to be spoke speaking during public and what wait, say you would said? not be in violation if I what if you were to come up and speak and if I left my seat as right. a trustee you would not be in violation and went to but speak. by the same token well then why the are you token, me? by the same token the board is not in violation of the Open Meetings Act when it says you can't speak because you don't have any right to speak. You don't have any right to speak, uh, which is a different thing. I'm a resident. Who says they don't have a right to no, speak? No. Every this, this, trustee. This actually says no, you don't have Karen, right. you know what? We cannot use you to misinterpret no. her letter. You need to get a definitive letter I, that states that. This is not definitive in any way. There is no statement in here relating to us. This isn't even our letter. This is regarding some trustee from the Kappa Village. Okay, can we move on now? I disagree with you. Sure, and you we can, we can move and, on. Sure. Sure. All right, my next um, item is, I was looking at our calendar, and according to a timetable that we received from Kleinthorpe and Jenkins, there's a couple things I wanna make sure we take care of because I'm not sure. Is this a calendar that we the received on an earlier calendar. date? Is I that know, Susan passed this out to us, um, and it's about board action dates, okay? All right, this is, this is not a, something that's in our packet tonight that we have. Is no, it's okay. something she gave okay. us that we're supposed to pay attention to. Okay, okay. Right. Um, It says August 7th, no later than the fourth Tuesday of September. Hold public hearing on budget and appropriations ordinance within or before the first quarter of the fiscal year and before the tax levy is made. Have we already had that? Is that the letter that she took care of? Or the, the ordinance that she... The public hearing you had last month. So we did this not on August 7th. Okay. Um, it also says um, that we are to a, an adopt an ordinance determining to levy tax 0.02% for maintenance, repairs, and alterations of the library and equipment by August 22nd. So do we plan on doing that? That's under a particular circumstance that you would do that. I don't think it applies to us. So we have no intentions of discussing a levy increase? No, we do. We are discussing a levy increase. When? It's on this calendar. I didn't see it. What page is that? Uh, wow. 42. 42. What is it? 42. 42. Okay. We have it scheduled for the September 19th meeting to determine the amount of the levy and to vote on it at the following meeting yeah, on October 17th. I, I thought we cut the budget, so See, gosh, why would we have to raise the levy? I don't see it. Okay. 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 Ok
you would have to have to raise the levy. You still have to have the levy. Okay. Every year we make a decision. It's because it just says levy amount. It might be easy to I thought levy would be. All right. So, But it says that we're supposed to. So are we having a meeting to discuss this, or are we going to jam it into a board meeting? Because that's what we do. We pack the agenda, well, and then we put we on a very valuable topic, yeah. like levy or budget. So do we want to have a, uh, a public meeting about discussing or determining to levy tax? I think usually what we do is we get a presentation from Greg. Mm -hmm. I think you usually give us some PowerPoint. Is that right, Greg? Correct. And in that PowerPoint, uh, there's usually a a chart of the past years, as I can recall, I don't have it in front of me right now, obviously, showing how much we've levied each year, showing the levy amount compared to the expenditures, I think is usually on the chart. Uh, there's usually a projection into the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you often uh, give us uh, some alternative projections, that is, if the levy remains the same, if the levy is increased, uh, so in some years you do that too. So usually we do have a presentation um, from Greg regarding the levy before we uh, vote on the levy. Well, and I think cramming it in the meeting is really tight. There's no room for discussion. Um, I think in the past years we've done it in one meeting, haven't we? Of course, it doesn't really matter. Five to two, I get it. Okay, but I have a question. If the levy is for maintenance, repairs, and alterations of the library, that's a different. We, that's a different levy. What levy are we talking about? If not this levy, we're just talking about the regular levy that we have every year. Yeah, yeah. if there's levy. going to be one or not. Adopt an ordinance. To, uh, an ordinance to determine the levy tax. There's more than one levy tax. Well, normally we just have our regular levy. Okay, and what's levy. the difference between the regular levy and the one that Klein, Thorpe, and Jenkins described in this handout? That's a building levy. It says right there that okay. it's a I know, building and maintenance levy. I, and where's the other? I don't see any other it's levy listed. Down. It's, you have to turn the page. A working cash fund. I don't see another levy. We're already in September. Yeah, it's generally uh, at the uh, November meeting. That, that November? Yeah. Then you vote, actually vote on it. Because if you yeah, look I think here, it's due by the look at on the So we're doing this in September, and here. Oh, this only check. goes up to October. You see where he talks here is where we discuss it. Or see I know, but what I'm saying is I don't where we see vote. it here. I don't see where there's two types of levies. And what we're doing, you mean? Or All right. So you, there, you just claimed ones for. Um, there are some component parts of the levy, like the working capital uh, fund, for example. If the if the board decided that they wanted a working capital fund, they could uh, they could allocate some of the levy up to a percentage to that particular fund. Then what happens is it becomes integrated with the overall levy. So uh, these are line items to establish different funds in different uh, different funds in the overall levy then. So there's really one levy, but there's different components. Okay, parts. so what are the components for a levy? One is supposed to be the building and maintenance, but that's not what we what already have a building and site fund. We do, we have nine hundred thousand dollars we put in there. Nine I don't know what that is. Yeah, nine hundred thousand. Okay, so I, I get that. Excuse me, I don't know what that is. That, I can't verify that number because Well, I, I asked about um, we talked about the budget and um, isn't it capitals for the building and all that jazz? So that's the special uh, that's the special projects mm -hmm. uh, special reserve fund mm -hmm. uh, in which we've uh, placed about uh, in which we have currently about a million and a half dollars, one point five million. And we've allocated approximately nine hundred thousand dollars of that fund which already exists mm -hmm. for, certain, for certain projects in the upcoming year okay. okay so what funds what other funds will be the building and site and which we already have so which we are don't excuse me building and site which we already have which so is we the nine hundred thousand no so we already have a building and site fund i'll have to look it up and then what other funds do we need to increase the levy for 
um, I don't think anybody's talking about increasing the levy. Why do you keep saying increase the levy? Why do we have a levy discussion? Okay. Yes. Carolyn, every year we decide to get a levy every year. Let me go flat, remember? Flat. I don't remember ever going flat, but it's. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you tell me what other reasons we would need to levy? Well, we have to levy uh, for the general fund, which is the day-to-day -day operations of the library, which includes paying salaries. Could you explain why we would need to levy if we just pass the budget to cover all that? Well, there's the expense side, which is the budget and the appropriations, and then you have to create the revenue side by, uh, by sending a levy to the state and to the county. And what that tells the state and the county is that the Niles Main District Library needs a certain amount of money is specified in the levy for the upcoming year, for the upcoming tax year. And that's what gives them the authority to put it on the tax bill, collect it, and then distribute it to us, and in the case of the schools, to the schools and the village, etc. So every year, whether the levy's going up or going down, or staying the same, or whatever happens in comparison to the other years, the board has to pass a levy because that instructs the county to tax the residents of the district. So then we can, in fact, just um, submit a levy that would cover the budget we just passed. No, that's up to you. Yeah. But that's what a levy could also be identified as, covering the budget that we just approved. That's up to the board. Okay. Yes, would you be could, the answer. Okay, then my you question make it, to you, you is... You can make it zero if you feel that that's within so then, uh, the interest of the libraries. Well, zero meaning we won't cover our... If you said we have to levy to cover our expenses, so that means Otherwise I'm interpreting as we have to levy mm -hmm. the budget we just approved. Or, or we won't get money from okay. that. But my question to you, and I lost my train of thought, so, keep, um, so my other question then about the levy is, how long of a levy is it? Is it every year that we levy? Or I thought you can only levy so every, every year. Because I thought last time we every talked, year. if we didn't levy, we would have lost some. Uh, well, if you don't levy, you lose the funds you could have gotten that year. You know what? I think I, is that it? I think, no, there was a year that what happened is it had been dropped so many, oh, so low. So many times and so low that there was one year that we had the opportunity to bring it up to a certain level and we were never going to be able to bring it up to that level if again. We didn't. If okay. we didn't. That's, she's right. That's, That's exactly what I think what I you're was, talking yes. about. Okay, good. Well, now I understand that. My last other is regarding the agenda. Um, I happen to have this um, copy of Robert's Rules, which is from www.robertsrules.com. And it's about how to get an agenda, uh, to get an item on an agenda for a meeting. That's been an issue um, for me for quite some time. And um, according to Robert's rules, um, I wanted to read exactly how they feel we should approve our agenda. It says for a proposed agenda to become the official agenda for a meeting, it must be adopted by the assembly at the outset of the meeting. At the time that an agenda is presented for adoption, it is in order for any member to move to amend the proposed agenda by adding any item that the member desires to add or by proposing a change. And then it goes on to say, it is wrong to assume, as many do, that the president sets the agenda. It is common for the president to prepare a proposed agenda but that becomes binding only if it is adopted by the full assembly. So according to this, before we even start our meeting, we should be approving the agenda. And if there wasn't any previous conversation, which apparently doesn't happen here, and we want to add something to the agenda, it can be added. Um, well, yeah, let me respect to that, and on top of Robert's rules of order, we also have to keep in mind the Open Meetings Act, which means we can't really add things to an agenda within 48 hours exactly. if we're going to uh, actually go right. right. So now, that means, do, according to this, you should allow Let me finish the sentence. So um, we do, um, on our agenda, have an other, so that if you come to a meeting 
and some things not already on the agenda, uh, you can bring it up in other. Uh, because the Open Meetings Act prohibits us from voting on anything that hasn't been on the agenda that's published for 48 hours, no, we wouldn't be able to vote on it. But you approve can approve is the word. Right? Uh, okay. Approve the agenda. Well, it says approve. The okay. agenda needs to be right. approved by all of us. Right. Well, what I was talking about right now was was actually voting. If, if the Open Meetings Act prevents us from actually voting on something, uh, but you can bring up new matters as you're doing right now during the other right. section of the. With agenda. all due respect, it's a little late at the end of the board meeting and I think your agenda item and Linda's agenda item and mine should all have equal value. To get an item on this agenda is like acting for, is like, like a miracle. And, I, and what, what this is stating, Karen, not that we cannot put an item on the agenda at the beginning of the meeting, but that you can't just determine the agenda without our input. You don't contact any of us, and when I contact you, it just, you know, it either gets overlooked or it gets rewritten. This says that we are all to approve that agenda. And of course, you probably shouldn't do it at the last minute, and it, it would need to be changed. You should do it before you submit it. Can, can I make a suggestion? I'm saying we need to follow this, yeah, and you need system. to respect all of us in preparing an agenda. All right, I'm going to recognize Tim now. Uh, who has a I suggest issue. that we put this item on next month's agenda, and we as a board decide how we want to create an agenda. Because okay, but we see don't, that's I'm the still problem. talking, Carolyn. Oh, yeah, please, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, oh, let me see that gesture again, Carolyn. You've been speaking for 20 minutes. Well, it's that's my, because I have something Carolyn, to say. Continue. I am talking. Go ahead and continue. What the hell? You talk for 20 minutes, right. I talk for three My seconds, and you make it then. My apologies. Thank Please you. continue. My God, heaven. Why don't we put an item on the agenda for next month for the board to decide and to discuss how we get items on the agenda? Then we could decide as a board. We do not necessarily follow Robert's rules strictly. No. It is a board decision how things should be done, our procedures. So let's just discuss it next month. Right? Uh, we can put that on the agenda for the creation of the agenda. Correct. Right. So we can discuss that. Next. Then can we have our procedures can be codified. We can show, we can decide our well, procedures. Okay. Can, can I ask a question when you're done? So if Robert's Rules of Order is something we don't have to abide by, then who is the guiding body for us to set an agenda? OMA? Well, I think, well, we do have to file the, uh, the well, who We don't have any question about that. Robert's I'm Rules of Orders, um, I don't know which version you're looking to, but I, mean, I know, have, I have every version that's out there. Many, many, many years. Um, I think our bylaws do refer to Robert's Rules of Orders and that we do use them. Um, there are different versions of Robert's Rules, some a little more simplified than others. Uh, but I think our bylaws uh, refer to Robert's Rules. Again, I don't have any further. So if our, bylaws refer, to, if our bylaws refer to Robert's mm -hmm. Rules, why would the preparation of our agenda not? Well, because the Open Meetings Act overrules Robert's Rules. So my question was, if Robert's Rules is not the governing um, guide for the agenda, is OMA, so you're saying OMA tells us how we should create our agenda. That's all I'm trying to figure out. Somebody has to tell us, because this board cannot continue to think five to two, that's the decision. So I just want to know, who is the, gu the guiding body? Is it OMA? Well, we do have to follow the open meetings. That, that's true. Is it OMA who explains how an agenda should be set for a meeting? Um, it does to a certain extent. It does? But I'll look it up. may not cover every question or situation that would come up. Well, it's just a matter of how an agenda says, is created. It says, it, it says that uh, I think an agenda has to be published 48 hours in advance. Right. Oh, is that all? That's all? The only concern is informing the public. That's the main concern of the Open Meetings Act, yeah. Well, I do know that Robert's Rules repeatedly mentions that this board, each and each person on this board is equal and that the president does not have any additional authority. So I'm just saying that's why we should all be included in the agenda. It used to be that before the agenda or this board packet was put together that you'd be notified or you can 
submit items for the agenda. Uh, I don't remember any particular Well, if you're going to discuss it next meeting, why don't we do that? Yeah. Table this until next meeting. Right. So, again, I just want to... Go ahead. Um, you guys approved a document in May of last year, mm -hmm. Niles Main District Library Trustee Guidelines, and under it, it did cover setting the meeting agendas because this is a recurring topic. Sure. And under it, what you approved says, trustees who wish to have something placed on the agenda should contact the board president or the library director at least one week before board meeting. These requests will usually be honored, but it is up to the discretion of the president to manage the board meeting time productively. You all approved that. So that is what you're supposed to be going under at this time. I could put, you could put on the agenda for next month to look at this document again. That's a good idea. Want. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. that's a reasonable yeah. way to handle it. Why did I see the body? It was actually that you read that I actually remember. Yeah, right. I do remember that now, too. Well, again, we're well, giving the authority to the president, and she can't deny well, items on the agenda. Or can decide what authority it gives. Right. I think that's what we decided. That's what we decided. So, but we can certainly talk about it again uh, next month. And if uh, you would, Susan, include a copy of that in the packet yeah. so that we all have a handy for next month. I think the that. question is was there anything that the board president ever took off? So I am the very what is the, what is the, all the time. Well, right, but what is the beef? That I can't get items on the do agenda. You, do you well, do it in well, so you're saying that, that they're saying, oh, I, everything's So, what you're saying is Karen has denied you. To put something on. Well, I thought it that's, was. That's what you're saying. Yes, it's not making okay. any And I believe and um, I Trustee Martin has asked I'm that. Just um, just Trustee Martin clear. asked if we could add to the agenda um, what is it, personnel? And that's never been added to the agenda. He asked that we take it out of the director. And that's never been done. I'm just saying, these are issues that come up. Uh, what do you mean personnel? But that was a I, I don't understand that. That's well, it would be a line item on the agenda, and then you're different. aware of what's going on. Well, it's a request to put it on the agenda. Well, you know, it's, it's, well and I do think I put it on the agenda at your request to the uh, certainly, I recall one time changing the wording of the item that you wanted to put on the agenda. And one other time after it had been on the agenda for three meetings in a row, uh, I think I said, I believe we've already discussed it enough. That we're planning, we're planning to put it on the agenda for a fourth time. Um, but otherwise, I think the items that you requested to be have, to have listed on the agenda have been on the agenda. And, and nothing can prevent you from bringing up those items under the other category in any event. And, and the other point is, I think as a board, we should know what's on the agenda before it's approved because based on what you put on the agenda, it would spark other items that we may want. We'll discuss this in the meeting. So that I'm responding to her comment. So let's go. Everybody's in a hurry to leave, so okay. I don't want to know. Carolyn, I'm not. Carolyn. I'm not. And, and why are you deciding this meeting? Well, because every time I say something, didn't we decide to discuss this later? Well, didn't I'm we, responding maybe to Maybe we should question. go around and ask if another book trustee has something else to say another? Oh, go right ahead. I thought you were all on the lead. Well, just anymore. because you've talked for the last half hour doesn't mean anybody else got something else to say. Well, Perhaps because I someone have else has another comment. I have yeah. something to say another? Yes. So now apparently yeah. we have a new law for um, travel expenses yes. that we have to vote on. Yes. yes. Okay. So I think we need to discuss our procedure for this. Well, you did that. I mean, that's part of the policy. Uh, I'd be happy to bring the policy back so you can see it. But you had to vote on it at the time the law was implemented, and we did change the policy to match the law. Yeah, we so did it in 2016. I'm not quite done. I apologize. It's okay. Um, I think we need to discuss our procedure a bit. That it seems to be since our trustees can vote against reimbursing other trustees for travel expenses that we had better look to approving these expenses before they're incurred. Um, in some form or manner. Yes. Because uh, if we all had voted with Carolyn, Linda would be stuck with a $2,500 bill. So I think that's we need to think about that. a possibility, although it's sort of impossible to fill up that form of accuracy at well, that time. You don't know I understand, but what you're we, going to do. Well, maybe we can pre-approve a certain, to a certain amount or something because this is clearly a danger. It's, uh, a, it's an immense danger. Uh, I understand what you're saying. It's, um, it's, 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 it's terrible. 
but you know. Yeah, it's, it's if you're going to represent the library and assuming yeah. you're going to get reimbursed, and yeah. then what if we all say no? Well, I I believe my comment was that's if a, he, so that's my suggestion is that we think about this and right. at some point we. Uh, so I think so I think actually in the future be specific. Yeah, yeah. perhaps in the future, if a trustee wants to uh, expend uh, funds, they should probably seek pre-approval just to be reassured right. that they will be reimbursed. Yeah, and sure. it might have to be in the form of up to a certain number of dollars with an estimate as to what the cost will be, although I know that will be somewhat difficult sure. to do. Should we, should we have that on the agenda so that it's in our thing on, like she was talking, uh, I think so. Trustee uh, rules or policies, you know, like before a thing, you need to be pre-approved. Yeah, I think so we, we need to change So we need to vote on that at an open meeting, um, or no? Right, and, you know, um, I suppose we could further amend our rules to say that a trustee may seek pre-approval. I, I don't want to foreclose someone from deciding after a meeting that they're going to go to perhaps even a local conference that yeah. you know if they did they incur a few hundred dollars uh and that they wouldn't be reimbursed because they didn't get pre-approval um so i i think we just want to say that a trustee may seek pre-approval if they want to be reassured ahead of time that they're going to be reimbursed mm -hmm. or pre-approval if it's a so over a certain amount yeah. Can I just make those? I would like to just say that as far as expenses go, as trustees, we should be bound by the same guidelines that the employees are. I mean, um, if 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 planning your trip um, is the price is determined by not doing it a week before, then you know we have to have some guidelines. I think you already said that during your discussion. No, the, excuse me, Emily. but the point you're making here is Karen saying that now we'll just pick an amount and approve it. Well, it's not the amount, it's, you know, are we being, you know, um, But you said this during our discussion. Carol, so I'd like sentence. to have that included as well, not just approve an amount. Well, when we make the, the, uh, the proposals, we can, we can handle it. part of the discussion. So, so uh, it looks like that's going to be on our next agenda, too, mm -hmm. a further discussion of the trustee reimbursement provisions. Oh, I think it's 4.16. Is that what it is? Is there any other? other? Okay. Oh, no, I'm done. I would think that the other had just as much time as the other. <laughs> <bottom. laughs> this time, and much more. Right. Well, it's too late. I think you're right. I think you're right. Okay, um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion second. Okay. Would you please do the work? Karen? Yes. Karen? Yes. Karen? Yes. 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 Yes.